What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Guns, Nerds, and Steel. Please support the channel by leaving a like and a comment on this video, and subscribe for more content just like this. Today, I present to you 69 Tips and Tricks for 7 Days to Die. So, you're new to the game, and you need some hot tips to get started. Well, these should help you get your bearings, save time, and survive smarter in 7 Days to Die. Let's begin. Nava's Game is a handmade map with special features. It's immersive, has one of every POI, trader, and biome, and has unique areas you will not find in other maps. Random gen maps are generated by the game. They're less immersive due to bugs, but potentially much larger, and they provide much more variety. Pre-gen maps are random gen maps that are already available for use without the need for time-consuming map generation. Sexual Tyrannosaurus is one of the most helpful skills in the game. You will need to spec into this to start using advanced tools and melee weapons more effectively. You can tell if you've read a book or schematic by looking at the book icon in the top corner. Open means read, closed means unread. One of your first to-dos should be to craft three pocket mods for your clothing. Opening up the backpack is a major priority. Keep an eye out for double pocket mods and armor pocket mods too. The Nerd Pole is the easiest exploit to allow access to those hard-to-reach areas. You will get more materials harvesting organics with a knife rather than other tools. You will get special materials if you harvest items with a wrench, as long as you see the wrenching animation. These stacks give you more resources per hit than anything else. Don't pass them by. You should aim to have a firearm by the end of day one. Craft a blunderbuzz and ammo easily. All items can be found in a matter of hours. Cotton plants allow you to craft cloth. Cloth allows you to craft bandages. Don't leave home without one. All traders restock every three days starting on day four. To see if today is a trader day, add the two numbers of the day together. Subtract one. If that number is divisible by three, it's a trader day. For the math impaired, airdrops occur on trader day by default, so you can go by that too. Stumps have a chance to provide honey. Honey is useful for infections or crafting the grandpa's awesome sauce later on. If you see an engine, you can break it down for a guaranteed engine. Save all of your brass. It gets important for late game ammo crafting. Try not to reread books and schematics, at least early game. Sell them for extra XP and dukes on top of that. Right click and drag to have your stacks. You can store commonly used items in the output slots of workstations for easy access. Shift click on stacks of items you want to sell in the trader menu to sell them all. You are more likely to find workstation schematics from the appropriate workstation. Check your local trader for one of every workstation. Feel free to loot a POI before activating a quest for double the loot. You can change an object's shape by holding R. This icon here indicates there are more options for shapes. Some items change entirely by doing this. Explore your options. You can get a writable storage chest by holding R with a storage box and selecting the writable box. These are not paintable, but can be labeled. You can also paint boxes to keep things organized in style. Holding a torch will make you warmer 
and so will standing next to a burning campfire or forge. Don't stand too close, though. Toilets have a chance to give you a level 1 pistol. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. The food sold in vending machines is much cheaper than food sold from the traders. And you came all this way. Throwing snowballs and rocks can distract zombies, but not animals. If you click the like button, you'll help other survivors see these tips. Bring your axe to the burned biome. Harvesting wood from burned trees yields the same amount of wood with bonus coal equal to 15% of the wood harvested. Bedrolls and land claim blocks create a zone safe from zombie spawns from bedrock to the skybox, the upper and lower boundary limits of the game. You are allowed one of each and only the most recently placed will be active. So now you've survived the first horde. Maybe. And you're hungry for more tips and tricks, or maybe you've just been hitting the forget and elixir a little too hard over the weekend. Either way, here's some more. High tech, but low quality items don't sell for very much, but they scrap into parts. Sell the parts instead, or save them for future use. Wood frames are the most underrated tool in the game. Create a path. Block a path. Flatten terrain. Nerd pole. Fires run on all combustible items. Coal, logs, gas, molotovs, cloth, plant fiber, overalls. Your game stage determines loot, horde difficulty, and zombie spawns. It is calculated using the days alive plus your level multiplied by 1.2. All vending machines restock daily at midnight. You can scrap items in the workbench to save the inventory spot. Melted items yield more resources than scrapping. Even some weapons and armor can be smelted. Right click to power attack with the wrench for faster breakdown. Note, this can alter the probability of getting specialty items such as radiators. Power attacking with the knife while harvesting is also faster for collecting resources. Start your power attack while aiming off the target, then quickly redirect to the animal to avoid the slow gutting animation. Falling on hay reduces fall damage significantly. Place them strategically to reduce movement times. You can smelt dukes for brass if you value ammo more than money. Nerd pole against walls for added safety. Zombies will knock out your pillar if they see you. Engines scrap for 30 mechanical parts. Place a hatch on the ground in front of doorways for an improvised fighting position. Parkour is a highly underrated perk. Dog food is not great for hunger, so save your dog food for Learnin' Elixir. Learnin' Elixir is a powerful consumable for boosting XP gain, great for horde nights or building days. Consumables such as candy, drinks, and food stack three times. Great for Horde Knight boosts. Eating broken glass is the fastest, cheapest way to reduce game stage. <laughs> Steel can be obtained from traders, gun safes, large street lights, 
and broken vending machines. Also from working vending machines if you're willing to pay the price. Be extra wary of barrels as they can easily explode, but you can use them to your advantage as well. Once you've read the book allowing you to craft stacks, always make them when harvesting resources for tons of extra XP. Screamers spawn based on heat generation. Open flames, destroying blocks, loud noise, gunfire and explosions, as well as gas powered tools are examples of heat generating items. Screamers and wandering hordes won't spawn during Horde Night. In fact, there is no heat generated on Horde Night at all. So it's a great time to get outside and be alive. Constant activation of a chainsaw or auger will produce less heat than pulsating activation. Each click generates extra heat. Silenced weapons produce less heat than unsilenced weapons. A screamer spawn will automatically reset the heat map to zero. Merchandise. Traders will buy only three of a non-stackable item or three stacks of the same item. If you have Intellect level 4 and you're wearing nerdy glasses, you can take 3 points into Better Barter. Men's By wearing drugs. or removing Ooh. your nerdy glasses, you can then activate or deactivate Better Barter level 3. Doing this allows you to switch between you two sets there, of secret stash items at each trader. If you click the subscribe button, you'll never miss out on great 7 Days to Die content posted 3 times per week. The Harvest plus 10% when buzzed from coffee book applies to hand tools and the auger and works with regular coffee and blackstrap coffee too. The Barter plus 10% with the Magnum drawn applies to the Desert Vulture as well. Mass is the weight of the block. Horizontal support is how much mass can be supported off one horizontal face of that block. Any block with an uninterrupted connection to bedrock is structurally sound and will never collapse. Place down doors using advanced rotation to create a drop floor or redirect zombie traffic. Zombies will always path to you using the path of least resistance. They will attack the weakest point to get to you. Create a weak point intentionally and focus your defense there. If you're above ground level and there is no path for zombies to get up to you, they will begin knocking out structural supports for the platform you're on. Build them a path to get up or prepare to defend your supports. If you have any tips that you'd like to share, leave them in the comments below, and they'll be included in the next Tips and Tricks video. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for my 69 Tips and Tricks for 7 Days to Die. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, support the channel by leaving a like and a comment below letting me know which tip was most useful for you. I'll be back again soon for another Tips and Tricks video, but until then, check out the Vanguard series here. Check out the Loot Tutorial and Lucky Looter Deep Dive here. I wish you all the very best. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.